I have seen many great athletes play the sport of basketball, guys who do things that don't seem humanly possible, and once I thought I saw it all, I put the tape on and saw things I never thought I would ever see. And what makes it crazier is, it's not just one person, it's two of them. Asaru and Amen Thompson are two of the most insane athletes I've ever seen from a draft prospect perspective, and they are the best twins I think to enter an NBA draft, or at least project to enter an NBA draft, maybe ever. And I think both of them have potential to be great players. If you haven't watched them play, or haven't watched the highlights even, you're missing out on something truly special and I'd highly recommend watching that. Let's talk about them. Now I actually saw Asari Thompson play in person back in March. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a man in person because I wasn't feeling well the day that he was playing, so I chose to stay back and rest that day. But I was really impressed from what I saw from Asari in that game. He was excellent defensively. He knocked up John Montero, and this was when John Montero still had first round buzz around him, and Asari made him a complete non-factor in that game. Asaru is a generational athlete, as is his twin brother. He's fast, he's quick, he's twitzy, he's flexible, has great balance, and incredible vertical pop. And he's doing this at 6'7 with a decently long arm wingspan. He is an elite slicing prospect. Downhill, he's almost unstoppable, and he has great body control. He's a solid passer and growing as a suitor. Suiting has and always will be the biggest question with both of them. Both of their forms are a bit of a work in progress right now, but I do think that I have been encouraged enough by Asaru's suiting improvements, especially with the form, to be encouraged about his long-term prospects. And as a passer, I think that Asaru has solid vision and accuracy, but he does project more as a connecting passer than a primary passer. Asaru is a player overall that projects as an elite slasher that can fit into the offense as a connector and hopefully as a solid enough suitor to respect and on top of that he's going to be elite in transition and have a high end defensive upside as a player. I think he has a chance to maybe be one of the better two way players in the league one day. I think of the two I'm slightly higher on Asaru as a scorer compared to a man. I think Asar is more aggressive as a scorer and is a bit further along as a suitor. I have Asar as my number 5 player in the draft as of right now. Of course, things can change, but if the draft were to happen today, which it won't, don't worry, Asar would be my number 5 guy. Now, even though I'm slightly higher on Asar's scoring potential, I am higher on a man overall as a prospect. A man is equally as freakish of an athlete as his twin brother. I think he has just as much defensive potential as well. But what separates the two is playmaking and the potential they have in their roles as playmakers. A man is not only the better of the two when it comes to playmaking, he also has an argument for being the best playmaker in this draft. He's legit special as a passing prospect and might be the most unique passing prospect I've ever seen. This is what he does as a passer. He's gonna set up with a crossover into a hang dribble. He's then gonna explode and attack the basket. Now I want you to focus on all the defenders on the court. They all have some form of attention towards a man as he's attacking the basket and it really is a sign of just how much scoring gravity he has as a slicer and how much rim pressure he can generate as an athlete when that many defenders are at the very least somewhat committed to trying to stop him on the drive. Now while in midair he's going to notice the open suitor on the perimeter and he's going to whip an accurate pass into the suitor's pocket and he's going to hit the open side. I broke down this play in a little under a minute. A man processed this entire play in 5 seconds. What makes him so unique as a passer is that he utilizes his athleticism to do things that even the most elite passers can't do. All elite passers have great vision, accuracy, and are extremely creative. And Amen does all of those things, but on top of that, he also moves in a way that creates opportunities and angles as a passer that just don't seem possible for many other playmakers. Because there aren't many athletes in general that can do what Amen does, let alone playmakers. 
I do think Ament needs to improve as a suitor. That's the biggest swing factor for him in my opinion. And that to me is a swing factor that takes him from stardom to potential superstardom. He's not as far along as a Sudo and he's not as aggressive of a scorer as a Saru, but he has potential to be a 6 foot 7 primary point guard who can also be connected if needed, that can generate rim pressure at a high level and be an elite defender. And if he becomes a respectable Sudo, he's going to be one of the hardest players to guard in basketball. To me, Aman is the third best player in the draft. Again, things can change, but a man has potential to do something that nobody else in his tier in this specific draft can do, in my opinion, which does separate him a bit from the others. It's very clear that the Thompson Twins are gifted athletes and gifted basketball players as well, but there is one thing I do want to address about them that does get brought up when you talk about them as prospects, and that's their age. They are a bit older for this class. They were born in January of 2003. Age-wise, they should have been eligible for the 2022 NBA draft, a draft where I think they would have been top by picks, and I think they were that good. And I know people view them as older because they are a bit older. Uh, they're both older than Jabari Smith, who was the third overall pick in 2022. But I'm not as worried about this as some people are. They aren't that much older than, say, a true sophomore or an older freshman in college. And I just don't think it's that big of a deal. Brandon Miller's another guy for me. He's a bit older. It doesn't go too much into the evaluation as you would think. But, you know, regardless of if the Thompson twins are 18 or they're going to be bordering on 20 when they get drafted. They just have things you can't teach. And that's what matters to me. And it's not like they're 23 or 24 or the same age as most guys in the NBA are when they get their second contract. They are still relatively young. They are around the same age that Jay Ivey was when he got drafted this year. So it's not that big of a deal in my opinion, the only way I view it as a big deal is if you were very close on two prospect grades. So I'll give you an example. Cam Whitmore is my number four player in this class. He's the guy in between a star and a man on my board. Uh, and the reason I have him slightly ahead of a star at number five is because Cam Whitmore is an equal prospect grade, but he's like a four year younger. That's an instance where it does matter to me. But I do believe that a man's potential is just that much better than anyone else in that tier behind Wemby and Scoot, where even someone can Cam who I think has a lot of potential, it doesn't matter as much in my opinion. So yes, they are a bit older. Yes, it is a factor when you're comparing players who have similar grades to them on, but it doesn't mean that they don't have potential, and it doesn't mean that they aren't worth drafting high in the draft.